Hi friends, Polly here and welcome to my weekend interview. And this is about being a twin. This is a part of a series that we're going to do. And a lot of people have asked me to do a podcast about what it was like growing up as an identical twin and being an identical twin, having my career with my identical twin and losing my identical twin. So to help me out here is my dear friend Alexis. Hi. And we're going to be talking about the early days of my twindom. Yes, and um, thank you for having me on your show to talk about you being a twin. And um, I know a lot about she and uh, Pamela. And um, I don't know what it's like to be a twin, um, but I definitely know, t you know what it was like to see into their world. So I'd like to you know, know what it's like to be a twin. Let's start a little bit maybe from the beginning. All right, well, being a twin is all I ever knew. Uh, uh, my earliest memories, of course, are with my sister, and we really needed to have each other because we came from a dysfunctional family. I hate to say that in case any of my family members are listening, but they know it. <laughs> we didn't really have a mother. Um, she, she had a very bad problem with alcohol. So Pam and I really depended heavily upon each other, and I really don't think we would have survived our childhood unless we would have had each other. And that's all I ever knew was being a twin. And I was told uh, that when Pam and I were very young, I would treat Pam like she was my doll. <laughs> <laughs> like I'd carry her around. And I was the mothering one out of the two of us. I mean, there were times when Pam mothered me, but you know, even on Mother's Day, she'd sometimes give me a card and she'd call me up on the phone and say, Mama, um. Mama, Mama. But we had strength being together. It was our foundation. It was all I knew and the love we had was incomparable I don't know what to even compare it to so uh, where did you grow up we grew up in Buffalo New York in the projects in the projects <laughs> in so the projects so so no not you know not much privilege here but um, in the projects what and was that like? And what, what's the projects? For people that don't know what the projects are. Well, it's funny because years later we brought our band there oh. to the projects to, to see what they look like. And our band thought that they looked like army barracks. Oh, you my know, goodness. We were taking them to Niagara Falls and stuff. And wow. They thought, wow, <laughs> you lived here? <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of people probably can't relate to that. But, oh, my gosh, that must have been really, yeah, not like anything that anyone's ever, you know, um, experienced. So Very true. you and Pam were always together. Always. And, uh, you know, we'd always, of course, be in school together and, you know, did everything together. You know, we sang. We knew when we were kids we were going to be singers. And we'd always fight like cats and dogs, even though we loved each other. There was a little competitiveness, and because as being a twin in a unit, we're always referred to as Pam and Paula, the twins. You right. still wanted to express your individuality. You still wanted to be heard. I mean, always we were a unit. We were, oh, the, here's the twins. Everybody, the friends, the family, everybody there referred to us dynamic. as twins? the twins. We were just yeah. the twins, yeah. you know. And, you know, things came along with that. Uh, you know, I mean, we'd blame each other for things, like, um, like if one pooped in one's pants, we blame the other one. She did it. <laughs> You'd have the poop in your pants, but you blame the other one. She did it. <laughs> and, you know, things like when we were toddlers, I found out that we actually went walked down a busy street to go to our favorite restaurant. When you were toddlers? When we were toddlers. We just can imagine the two of us toddling down a street with our little blonde curls. Oh my going to our favorite Italian restaurant, you know. <laughs> well, you, you were probably very independent starting very yeah, young. Yeah, yeah we, we actually were. Like I said, she was my doll, and I took I took care of her. Uh, and it was just we used to like rock our cribs together so we could gouge each other's faces. But God forbid anyone else ever harm my twin. I'm sure. You know they'd have yeah. it with me or vice versa. You know we no one else could harm our twin except for each other. <laughs> but we'd five minutes later we'd even forget we were fighting about. Well, I mean, that love, there's nothing like it, right? That The love between the two of you. No, no. We'd, we'd always feel sorry for, you know, what we call singletons, people without a twin, which, of course, most people on the planet. Right. And we'd always say, God, how could they know the love and the intimacy and the closeness that we have? How could they possibly know it? We don't. No, they don't. <laughs> I and don't. No, they don't. I always wished I was a twin because every time I saw you with her, I wanted to feel that feeling. 
And so that's why, oh, it doesn't matter. I mean, because I don't want to talk about that right now. But well, a lot of you're not the first person to tell me that. A lot of people said, oh, I always dreamed and wished I could have been a twin. Yeah, it's really it's true. because maybe they're lonely. And when you're a twin, you you don't really know what loneliness is. And Pam and I were always very surprised when we'd meet other identical twins that weren't really close. We we couldn't wrap right, our, I'm sure. our heads around that. We're like, you guys don't do the same thing? You guys like don't live together or else five minutes away from each other? We couldn't understand that. Yeah, it, yeah. it puzzles me as well. Yeah, yeah, I would always tell people we were one big being that was so big we had to get two bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. And seeing you together, I uh, I always saw you together, and it always made everyone so happy. And, uh, well, anyways, we'll talk about all of the other things later. But I did want to say one more thing and, or ask you, what what was the one thing that uh, you, you were separated? Yeah, we were separated in sixth grade for a little bit, and that was probably the roughest time we had. Uh, because I, my mother was such a severe alcoholic at this point. Mm. I just couldn't be with her. At, I just, I, I had enough. And my dad was with uh, another woman that later on became his wife that I really liked a lot because she was just the first woman I ever really knew. Yeah. And I wanted to be around her because I wanted to learn about what it's like to be a woman. Oh. And my sister felt really sorry for my mother. I didn't have that same sympathy because I had it up to here already. I was done. I, I, I was done. And so the two of us would just be on the phone for hours, just there. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even, you know, we didn't even have to talk just knowing that each other. You didn't need words. Was on the other line was, was enough for us. Right. And Pam and I would always be able to walk into a room and just look at each other and sum up a situation, sum up a person. We always shared the same friends. Mm -hmm. always the same friends is she was the first one to get a friend but you know and then of course I talk about that later uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but the two of us you know always shared for our friends we always had the same group of people we didn't have separate groups always the same group and that's just the way it was we always had the same clothes you know uh, were you competitive actually we were competitive but I think our competitiveness is what made us better because if she learned how to do something, damn it, I had to learn it too. And sure. if I learned to do something, she had to learn to do it too. Although she didn't mind me cooking. That was okay with her. <laughs> well, I have to say I know she's a great cook. <laughs> well, but no, she, she, always, uh, she was always happy that I would, would cook for her. You know? <laughs> sure, let me do it. Yeah. Oh, Paula, I'd say, why don't you make us something? Well, you're the better cook. So my ego would get in the way and go, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll cook. <laughs> but, you know, I, it's like a sword. It cuts both ways because I was so lucky to have that twin love and that closeness that other people don't know. But at the same time, losing it, not having it anymore because she's gone, hurts so bad. And I have to watch my emotions. You know, I, I, I like the first, after she died, I, I cried and I cried and I cried every day for probably seven, eight months. As a matter of fact, one time I cried, I think for six hours straight just tears just kept coming and I'm wondering how is it possible to cry that much how is it possible to have that many tears why aren't I dehydrated I just couldn't understand how it was possible to cry all that but I was blessed to have that love and I realize that now but it, hurt, it does hurt to lose it and I have to keep myself detached when I talk about this because if I get involved in every single emotion of it you know I'll start crying like it's too bad I'm not an actor right now because I could turn on a tear easily yeah. No glycerin drops here. They would, <laughs> they, you know, I wouldn't need that. But uh, I just, I was blessed. I was truly, truly blessed. And now when I see identical twins, you know, I, I smile, but I get sad at the same time, you know. And as a matter of fact, I did a show about a year and a half ago, and there was a mother that came up to me with a set of redheaded twins, girls. And I was fascinated, you know, and I was talking to them, and I was envious of course. I start crying I mean, when I think about it. I was envious knowing, you know, the closeness that they, they had and what they shared. And I brought them up on stage and everything, and, you know. And I sometimes forget that she's not here, and I'll go to tell her something. I don't know. Oh, I, I can't tell her. But I have felt her at times, and I'll feel her 
on my head like this, like touching the top of my head. And I'll feel a warm glow inside. And I'll never forget one time I was looking at a thread of lights in my patio and one part of them were out. And I said, Pam, if you're here right now, make it go on. And do you know that, the, that those lights went on? Wow. Lasted about a minute, but they went on. And I was like, they never went back on again. And That's amazing. Yeah, it, it is amazing. I believe in all of that. I believe that. I, be I believe she's a Valoway because think about it. We're just separated by a sh raw energy. We're just separated by this veil. You know, I don't have, she doesn't have the body anymore. Doesn't mean she's still not present. Oh, uh, she's here. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's not she's, far I, away from you, that's for sure. No, I actually had a dream, uh, which was the best dream I ever had about her. Uh, I'll never forget, she's peeking around a corner of a window, and she had this blue shirt on, and she looked really pretty. And she looked at me and she goes, I'm still here. And I woke up and I was just so happy to have that dream. You know, I keep a little journal mm -hmm. about her, and I started writing in it about seven weeks after she died and uh that that was pretty right pretty that i look you. i look at the early writings of it i look and whoa you know the, the so much grief and now i i talk to her like almost like i'm just asking for spiritual advice sure sure like are you up there guiding me helping me you know and i think she probably is every day she must be she is but i'm still mad at her for leaving me you yeah. know because we were supposed to die together with our bony old hands <laughs> You know, we'd always say, Which are never we'd bony. always say, I, I want to go first. I'd say, no, she, I want to go first. She'd say, we'd fight about who's going to go first. Well, I couldn't live without you. Well, I couldn't live without you. But here I am. Right. I start crying, living without her. And uh, it's not what we imagined. We imagined our bony old hands holding each other and dying within hours or days of each other. That's what we really imagined. And uh, didn't quite work out that way. And when you lose someone unexpectedly. Right. It's really shopping, uh, shocking. I remember I went to, uh, I belong to a, a Twinless Twins group. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and you, I, can, yeah. you can find them on the internet, and uh, they have Facebook pages and whatnot. And it was nine months after my sister died, I went to the first convention. Where is that in? in it, it, it's all, they have it in different parts of the country oh, I see. every year okay. in July. Mm -hmm. They're not having it this year because of the, the COVID virus. Mm -hmm. But I remember I walked in, and I saw all the other twins, and... I just was so emotional because I thought I'm pretty strong about this and I was so emotional when I saw the twins I, I ran out and started crying and luckily someone caught that in me and, and, and brought me back in and you know I was okay but they separated us into two different groups they had a group of twins who lost their twins unexpectedly and yeah. twins who lost their twins over uh, you know a long illness like a long right. duration and I was actually envious of that group I know it sounds kind of morbid but I was actually envious of the group that lost their twins right. long term because I thought boy they got a chance to tell all the last little things and talk about the last little memories and all the I love you's and when your twins ripped from you unexpectedly you didn't get a chance you didn't, no closure you, you, right you didn't get a chance to do that you didn't and you, didn't have a chance. you weren't even prepared for it. at least if you knew that they were gonna die you'd be prepared but when right. you're not when it's unexpected you're not prepared and just it slaps you and you, you're spending the first while in such shock Right, you and know? that lasted quite a while for you. It's it's still probably you know having to relive that, and we'll touch a little bit on that in another segment as well. Yeah, you know. So um, we can we can like wrap this up, and we can talk more on the next segment about your um, childhood and, and the and elementary you, days, elementary days, <laughs> and starting a band. Yeah, and how that all you know, yeah, lots to tell. Bands There's so many stories to tell. Of course, you know, I should probably write a book. Probably a tale of two twenties. There should be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> a tale of two twenties because the things my sister and I have been through. Um, wow, I pretty amazing. Uh, yes, we've had pretty amazing lives all over the world. Yeah, I mean, it's, we, it is a tale. We know what it's like to uh, have to put extra water in the soup into yeah. dining into the finest restaurants in the world. So, right. you know, we've had that up and down life. Yeah. But for all of you people who've lost someone close and dear, like a sibling or a twin or a spouse or whatever, it's like, you know, be kind to yourself. You know, don't beat yourself up. And and as you say, you know, live in that moment. Live in the yeah, moment. this mo really, it really opened up a spirituality in me because when my sister passed, she had some Eckhart Tolle, um, CDs in her car and 
uh, I, you know, she would have me listen to him and I, you know, ride together. And, I, you know, I'd listen. And I'd, you know, I appreciated him, but then I really appreciated it after she passed. Sure. And Eckert is what kept me going, you know, and I really learned about being in this moment because if I stay in the past and start thinking about my sister and going there, that's when the sadness comes. Sure. You know, so I just be in this moment and enjoy this moment. And I know that one day I will see her again. And I look forward when I head toward the light and go through that tunnel. You know, and she's waiting there. She'll be she's she'll there. be there with open arms waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me on your show. Well, thank you for interviewing me, Alexis. You ask very intriguing questions. Yes. And, and we do have other segments yeah. that we're going to be doing. So mm -hmm. thank you for tuning into this one. And love and light, my friends. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Paula. Okay. And, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.